Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very, very warm welcome to you all. As chair of KIA, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the 2009 World Class New Zealand Awards. We are now in our sixth year, and this is the fourth year that KIA has co-hosted this along with New Zealand Trade and Enterprise. Tonight is a celebration of success. As we together recognise world-class talent and acknowledge individuals and ca that characterise New Zealand's success. We're proud to do this with New Zealand Trade and Enterprise. We really admire what they do, particularly in three particular aspects, beachheads, new thinking and better by design. I'd like to make a special mention tonight of uh, Minister Tim Grosser. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Prime Minister John Key will be with us uh, in about 15 minutes. The, the board of Kia that are here tonight, uh, the, the Mayor of Wellington, Kerry Prendergast, who's on our board, John Stace, who's been mentioned, Ross McConnell and Chris Pickerel. Current winners, past winners and judges. I would li also like to welcome tonight the Chair of NZTE, John Mason. I'd like also to thank our sponsors. Tonight's evening would not have been possible without them. IRL, Industrial Research Limited, GNI, Orion Health, BDO Spices, Wellington City Council, the Foundation for Research Science and Technology, Enterprising Manukau, and Ernst & Young. We are here tonight to celebrate the best New Zealand can offer on a world stage. For a small, small nation, we certainly pack a big punch internationally. We founded Kia in 2001 after the two Knowledge Wave conferences. We founded it on the name Kia because of the, uh, the bird. The bird, we, we believe, epitomises New Zealand. Number one, it's a particularly beautiful bird, like all of us here in the room. But also, it epitomises New Zealand because it's plucky. It's got courage. It, it's, it's got confidence. And it's one thing that we need as a bunch of Kiwis here in 2009, is the courage of the Kia bird. But in those days, it stood for Kia Expat Association, or the Kiwi Expat Association, or Kiwi Excellence Abroad. And it then developed into New Zealand's Global Talent Network. Obviously, we couldn't keep all our best and brightest people in New Zealand, and so we had to find a way of keeping them connected to New Zealand. As you've heard, one in four skilled New Zealanders live offshore. It's the only two things that we top the OECD in. Number one, <laughs> the number of expats living outside our country. And number two, the number of highly skilled, highly paid expats living outside our country. We need to leverage that. Kia is a global community of 25,000 ki Kiwis offshore, and it's growing. The World Class New Zealand Network is a special group within the Kia network. Our members hold senior positions in leading organisations around the world, such as Microsoft, Google, Vodafone, BP, Oxford University, the U University of London, Saatchi and Saatchi, Fonterra, PGG Wrightsons and Chevron, and an awful lot more. World Class New Zealand Network ad advantage is that it harnesses the collective horsepower of these heavy hitters and keeps New Zealand to its full potential. The World Class New Zealand Network also has deep connections and passions for New Zealand, an overwhelming desire to contribute expertise, connections and international perspectives to keep New Zealand in business. And I'd like to just share a, a couple of thoughts with you from uh, New York, where I just got back yesterday. Uh, we had a Kia meeting with our chapter up there on Friday night, and I met uh, about 80 of our fantastic members. And one of them told me about a week ago, he and one of our other Kia executives walked into a New York bar and saw a guy sitting on a bar stool and thought, hmm, he looks a bit like a Kiwi. And sure enough, when he went over to him, he was. This chap was travelling to the United States and he had a business for an in-store program for a, um, 
a group called Athlete's Foot. Uh, that's a shoe chain over there, not a disease. <laughs> and when asked uh, what he needed, uh, he said that he was in the sports beverage related business. So these guys said to him, listen, we can make some connections to you to some great New Zealanders. We know the head of Foot Locker, the chairman, he's a member of Kia. We know the head of worldwide marketing for Coca-Cola, he's a member of Kia. We know the worldwide head of marketing for Gatorade, which is a division of Pepsi-Cola. She's a woman member of Kia. We also know the head of PepsiCo. He's English, but he's a great friend of New Zealand, and in fact, I coach his son in a rugby team, was relayed. This guy was absolutely blown away. And what it actually proves is the strength of our network. We have a fantastic searchable database. You can all go on it. All you need to do is look for the particular vocation of the people that you want some advice from anywhere in the world, and they are available to you. Now, another fantastic example of the world-class New Zealand network. Tonight we have with us one of our awardees, Craig Neville Manning. Craig is a winner of one of tonight's awards. Particularly low-profile New Zealander. To cut a long story short, he met the founders of Google when studying at Stanford, and after they asked him, and then they asked him to join Google way back in 1993. He is now the Director of Engineering of Google in New York City. Can you imagine the experience Craig has gained over that time? As a member of the World Class New Zealand Award, Craig has committed this whole week to help us here in New Zealand on this trip. He's provided advice and guidance to some of the established and early stage New Zealand businesses and has had meeting with government departments. Thank you, Craig. You're a true world-class New Zealander. <laughs> Over the last 12 months, we have conducted a number of summits for the World Class New Zealand Awards, and for, and for during these summits, both in New York, London, and three in Auckland. The world-class New Zealanders can help in many, many ways. They are prepared, when asked to help, by sitting on New Zealand boards, to provide advice to government ministers, to assist with re major research studies in, se in specific sector-related advice and elite individual mentoring. Today's summit, which was held this morning across the road at the Northern Club, we had 80 participants from our network. We focused on identifying who within the New Zealand world-class network and what and how will keep New Zealand and help New Zealand using their international connections and influences. We discussed education as a key export earner, Auckland as an international city, New Zealand business opportunities around the World Cup, SMEs to help survive in the recession, to help New Zealand meet the challenges of the current global economy and to support the Prime Minister's priorities in the job summit. And lastly, what I would like to say is just how passionate Kia, Kia people are around the world. I've now been travelling in my business career for over 30 years and I've met a huge number of New Zealanders in, all, in very, very many places. And the one thing they all possess is a magnificent passion for our country. And when you go and tap a Kiwi, on the shoulder in another country, they are always willing to help. This is something that is amazingly powerful. Uh, we've been conducting a survey recently, and the sort of anecdotal advice that we've been getting back that we can't report because it's private, it's between two individuals, and we don't want to get involved in the transactions for legal reasons, but we know of instances where $10 million has been raised for New Zealand businesses on one instance, huge amounts of mentoring, massive amounts of business transactions and doors open. So I really commend to you Kia and the World Class Business Awards. Now, you'd probably be asking yourself, what can we do as individuals in this room? Well, one thing you can do is go back, take a look on the website, www.kianewzealand, that's spelt the whole New Zealand, dot com. All of you are uh, eligible to join, and we'd love to have you with us. And the other thing is, it takes money to run this 
venture. Uh, a number of you in the room are sponsors of Kia, but we need more sponsorship, and we'd be very grateful. In fact, I'd be very grateful. You can get hold of me at any time, day or night. I'll accept your phone calls. But we're looking for more sponsorship, and we'd love, love to hear from you. The last thing I'd like you to do uh, before I run a video for you is to please stand and drink a toast to the greatest little country on earth. <laughs> New Zealand, Aotearoa. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. So how do we attract more Kiwis? Well, one of the ways is online. And here is a virtual campaign that some of our volunteers in Australia produced, which resulted in 1,100 new members signing up in just four days. And lastly, before I run it, please take home one of our programs. You'll notice that we've got the names of every one of you that are here tonight. Uh, tonight is part of networking, and we hope that uh, when the formal part of the evening's over, there may be somebody on this program you want to see or meet, go find them at their table. But also, if you want to come back through Kia, if there's anybody you want to network with off this program, we'd be very happy to make those connections. Have a fantastic night. Good evening. Far back in the midst of time, the world as we know it, it didn't exist. Here in the South Pacific, a unique landmass had formed over millions of years. This massive landmass was called Zealand. The people of Zealand were happy and content for many years. But then a terrible earthquake happened, and a bit broke off. And today, we call that bit Australia, or the bit that broke off in Māori. The Australians were sad as they missed their old Zealand, which was now, in fact, a New Zealand. Although far smaller, it had all the things that Australia lacked, like good Pinot Noir, fashionable clothes, and of course, New Zealanders. So the Australians enticed New Zealanders over whenever they could and claimed them as their own. First came William Hudson, who built the Snowy Hydro Scheme. Then came Farley, Australia's Wonder Horse. And they were followed by many other New Zealanders, including Reg Mombasa, Sam Neill, John Clark, Keith Urban, Fred Hollows, Jane Campion, Crowded House, Colette Dinnegan, and Russell Crowe. Okay. Maybe they can keep Russell Crowe, but who could forget Anzac Biscuits and Pavlova, both from New Zealand. But now we want to claim our New Zealanders back and put them in touch with each other. So if you're a Kiwi living or working in the bit that broke off, get in touch and say hello.